everyone. Uh, today I'd like to talk about a very important test to uh, examine the erosion and tracking resistance of different polymeric materials. Basically, my experience is using it for silicon rubber, but it can be used for other polymeric materials like ABDM and, and epoxy. The test is the inclined plane test, and we call it for short IBT. First question, why we need this test? What are the standards? Uh, what is the acceptance criteria and so on and so forth. These things will be discussed and at the end I will take you to the lab and I'll show a small demo of how we can conduct this test. Start with why we need to have an erosion test for the uh, materials or for the non-ceramic materials in specific. Uh, as we know our donosilators they have to uh, work under severe environmental conditions that include humidity, wetting, and high voltage. This is the applied high voltage and pollution. So having this combination, high voltage with wetting agent with a pollutant, then you start to have a dry band arcing on the surface. Dry band arcing will lead to damage on the inserted surface. This is a 15 kilovolt insulator, and here you can see some damages. These are erosion happening on the surface of the of the insulator due to dry band arcing. This is a rod of a silicon rubber insulator, and also you can see here clearly this is all these are some damages happened to the uh, to the rod. So before we use the material or the insulator in the field, we have to make sure that they can withstand such uh, arcing on their on their surface. Now, when it comes to the test, we have two main classes of tests. Some, the first one called material test, the second full insulator test. In the material test, we bring samples of the materials and we test this without bringing the full insulator. And the most common type of test used to test the material is the IBT test. So the IBT test is basically a test that used to screen the materials and see how it is good uh, or how it is its uh, erosion and tracking resistance when it is subjected to a dry band arc. Now, all insulator testing will bring the full scale insulator with the, with the end fittings and we subject it again to some wetting agent under severe accelerated agent conditions. And the most common test is the salt fog test. Hopefully in the future, I will be talking about the salt fog uh, test. Now, there are two main standards and they are very, very similar to each other. As we'll see, the ASTM 2303 standard and the IEC 60587 standard. Now, there are two versions of the test. The first one, uh, they are named differently in the ISTM and the IEC standard. However, they are almost the same. The first one is called the initial tracking voltage test method. And the second one is the stepwise tracking voltage. Now, in these two methods, basically what we do, we apply a voltage and then we keep increasing the voltage by 250 volt until the material fails. And this is why comes the name stepwise tracking voltage. But the most common method that even uh, personally I like to use and in the industry, they use it more, which is the time to track test as named by the ASTM standard or the constant tracking voltage. In this method, we apply certain voltage and we keep the material under test for six hours. And we'll see, does the material pass the test or, or not? Now, here is how the material look like in the testing. It's basically a slab of material with 50 millimeter by 120 millimeter uh, dimension. It has holes here, two holes on top and one hole at the bottom. Why these holes? The first top hole is basically for the high voltage electrode. This is a high voltage electrode and the uh, the hole in the bottom for the, for the ground. This is the ground uh, position. So as you can see here, material, very uh, flat material. It's not, it's not an insulator at all. 
this is the setup that's used for the for the testing and it's composed for, for uh, from many uh, or different parts i will uh, specifically talk about the most important one we have the variac and the high voltage transformer the variac is used to control the primary of the transformer to reach to the required voltage level uh, that will be used to test the material then we will have the uh, 200 watt resistor this is a limiting resistance for the dry band arcing because the material will be subjected to a lot of arcing on the surface to avoid any short circuit we need some resistance to limit this this current so that will not be short circuiting the, the high voltage supply here is the sample and the sample as you can see it's in, in an inclined position at 45 degree and this is where the comes the name of inclined plane test now we need to provide a continuous supply of electrolyte to the surface of the insulator so we use what we call a prosthetic pump the uh, prosthetic pump what it does it supply a very precise a very slow rate of uh, of uh, contaminant and this contaminant will be uh, the main uh, source of the uh, wetting on the surface and with the high voltage then you will start to have dry band arcing in the in the surface and here comes the resistance or measurement of the uh, material resistance to erosion subjected to this dry band arcing on the on the surface uh, in my opinion these are to, uh, the two most important tables in each standard, the ASTM and the IEC standard. And we will go through these tables and see the resemblance between the two standards. So for the voltage levels, as you can see here, they are almost the same. It, they are actually the same, but the IEC standard, they specify a preferred voltage that is closer to the to the, to, 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 the, to the high range of the voltages. For example, between 3 to 3.75, suggested to use 3.5 uh, 4 to 4.75 4.5 and the industry usually they use this voltage level the 4.5 kV as the criteria to test the the material then we will have the uh, series resistor the, the one I told you about that to limit the the dry band arcing now this is one of the few differences between the two standards so uh, at these two voltage levels both use the same uh, limiting resistor but at higher voltage levels three and above for the ASTM we use only 50 uh, kilo ohm resistance but for the IEC standard we have 22 and then we have 33 uh, kilo ohm so in my opinion this is one of the few differences between the, between the standards this is the flow rate uh, how much ml per minute we have to uh, we have to supply using the prosthetic pump and they are exactly the same uh, so you can see here that the, there is a combination between the voltage the series resistance and the flow rate so have, you have to make sure that these these three items are matching with each other so for example if you just assemble at the 4.5 kV which is as I said one of the standard method used or voltage level used by the the industry then the flow rate has to be 0.6 ml per, min per minute the limiting resistor now if, it, if we are using the ASTM standard have to be 50 kilo ohm using the IEC standard it has to be 33 kilo kilo so in my opinion this is the most uh, important information that you need to know about the, the about the standard what is the failure criteria they are very similar both of them uh, specify that from the bottom electrode up if the uh, track reaches 25 millimeter then the material considered as failed IEC also specifies that if the current exceeds 60 milliamp, then you have to uh, remove the sample from the test without interrupting the whole test, and this sample considered as a failed sample. What is going on now? Uh, the IEEE uh, Outdoor Insulator Committee, we worked together, and I was honored to be part of this committee, and we came up with a guide to apply the, IE, the IPT test to what? To DC, uh, DC uh, voltages. All the voltages I mentioned here, they are, I, uh, are, they are all AC, and these are the RMS value. Now, as we know, there is interest to use uh, plus minus uh, high voltage DC. So 
the committee came up with this guide and these are the suggestion of how much equivalent voltage level you have to apply during the IBT test to achieve a similar stress if you are testing the material under AC. So if you're using plus DC, it, you, you use 70% of the standard uh, voltage. So if you're using 3 kV, then you multiply this by 0.7, you, you, so you have 0.21 kV plus DC. If you're using minus DC, then you use 90% of that, of that voltage. This is in brief, uh, a very uh, quick overview of the standard. Now let's go to the lab and have and see all these uh, setups and running the test and the dry band arcing in real real action. So please join me to go to the to the lab. So the IBT uh, setup starts from the voltage regulator here, where you can control the uh, voltage. This voltage regulator is connected to the high voltage transformer. Uh, this is the high voltage transformer. You connect the high voltage probe to it, so that we can measure the voltage on the on the scope. These are the samples here. Come closer to them. So the samples they are in uh, inclination of 45 degree. On top of the samples, you will have the holes from which you connect to the water pump so that you will feed the electrolyte here and here is the this is the high voltage electrode and this is the grounded electrode and this is the water pump and here is the how we control the flow rate finally here is the limiting resistors that will limit the arcing current Before starting the test, you have to make sure that there is water flow here coming from the high voltage electrode and going down to the bottom electrode as you can see in these samples. So this is the measured voltage as you can see here it's around 2.7 kV. Okay, let's, let's look to the, the sample itself. So now you can see here there is sort of arcing happening on the samples and this test will stay for six hours to test how the material resistance or erosion resistance to the dry band arcing. Okay now the testing is after half an hour so you can see here the arcing is more more intense than when we started the test here and it is consistent in all samples. This is something very important. You have to have a consistent arcing during the whole test. So the main objective of the witting is to uh, feed the high voltage to have a continuous arcing to test the erosion resistance of the silicon rubber samples.